Welcome friends, it's Kaylee Bird. I would say one of the most daunting and confusing parts about oil painting is all like the paint thinners and the mediums and what to use and fast drying and slow drying and all that kind of stuff. I think that that is one of the main reasons why a lot of acrylic painters hesitate to try oil. But you know what? I got you today. Today I'm gonna to tell you all about thinners and mediums and how they're used and break it down for you. It's super simple. So make sure you pop that subscribe button, ding the bell, and please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it and you learn something so that more people see it. Thanks guys, enjoy. Okay, now let's talk paint thinner. This is very important. This is probably the most toxic aspect of oil painting. So you really need to pay attention to this one. Now, if you say paint thinner, terpenoid, turpentine, odorless paint thinners, mineral spirits, all of that is basically the same thing. All of those break down the pigments and oils on your paintbrush and remove them. They strip the bristles of the oil paint, which is what you want. However, they are definitely not all made the same. A regular paint thinner such as this that you might get from the hardware store is going to be very fragrant and I don't mean that in a good way. It's going to smell very toxic. It's going to have that really chemically toxic fume and you do not want to be bringing, uh, breathing those fumes in. Those fumes are actually very bad for you. Um, if you do wind up with something that has more of a fume scent, I highly recommend wearing a mask, possibly even an N95 mask. I personally prefer Gamsol. This is the brand that I have found to be the least odor. I can't smell it whatsoever. It is the most odorless paint thinner that I've ever found. Now you can find plenty of mineral spirits and otherless, other odorless terpenoids that work just fine. I personally like this brand, but there are many that work well. And as I said, this is important because you don't want to be bring, breathing in those fumes. Now, last but not least, a lot of oil painters don't tell you about this, but you actually need to have a safe place to put any of your rags or used um, napkins, paper towels, if you use the paper palette, you need to put those in here because oil paints and thinners actually can ha create a chemical reaction if you leave them in your trash can or in piles because usually we tend to reuse our rags over and over again. If you use them in piles on your you know, painting table or whatnot, there can be a chemical reaction where the actual thinners and mediums can start to heat up and if it's not very well ventilated it can actually spontaneously combust. Now I don't want you to be afraid it is an extremely rare occurrence however if you put all of your used and even in the process of being used um, napkins, paper towels, rags, any of those kind of things if you put those in a jar that is an airtight glass jar with a lid this will not allow oxygen in there, so therefore a spontaneous combustion will not occur. However, no matter what you're doing, you need to store this kind of thing away from light in some place cool, shaded, someplace that's not gonna get a lot of direct light. None of these paint thinners, no matter how good they are, need to be sitting in a lot of light. And not only do you need to be putting your materials and paper towels and waste into a jar, but eventually you need to take it to proper disposal. So this should not just go in your regular kitchen trash with everything else. You should take this to a proper disposal recycling center or trash center near you and let them know, hey, these have liquids, mediums, they have terpenoids on them. Can you please dispose of these properly? I've done it myself. The people are very, very nice. It didn't cost me any money. I simply gave it to them and they were able to put it in the correct incinerator or whatever they did so that it didn't wind up affecting any groundwater or anything like that. And you need to have ventilation no matter what you're using. Even if you can't smell it, you need to make sure that you're in a large open space with open windows or some fans blowing around or something because the any of the negative chemical aspects that you would get from oil painting would be very slow over time. So you might get a little lightheaded if you're using some paint thinners that you would notice immediately, but other than that, you won't notice anything for many years. So make sure to take preventative measures now so that you and your mind and your body will be well and good to paint for many years to come. For actually cleaning your paintbrushes, you're going to want a jar with a wire in it 
that you will fill with paint thinner. Now, the reason why you want the wire in it is because you're gonna need something for your brushes to kind of scrub up against while you are cleaning them within the thinner. And trust me, you cannot just use the bottom of the jar because that's gonna get full of old oil paint gunk. So you wanna have a jar with a wire in it. I make my own, but of course you can buy them at the store. They're not very cheap, so I definitely recommend making your own. But this is the way that we clean our paintbrushes. And the good thing is, is that you do not throw away your thinner after every use. No, you get a jar with a lid on it and you just use it and use it and use it. And actually you never have to throw it away. Now, as far as mediums go, I tend to only pour out a little bit of what I need in a bottle cap. Some people will put it in jars. However, I have found that opening and closing a jar over and over again or leaving it open tends to dry it out. So I like to pour in just what I need and try not to waste too much. Now what mediums do is they thin out your paint. So if you've got, this paint is actually quite wet already. This is a very fluid brand, but I'm just gonna show you. So you can see that's the paint right out of the tube. And even though it is a very fluid brand, it's still gets thin as it goes down. However, if I take some medium and mix in a little spot of medium, it's going to really make the flow much more intense because it's thinner. And so you're gonna be able to go much further with it. Now, of course you can still use it thickly, but it's just going to super duper increase the flow because you're literally, it's literally an oil. So this is oil paint. There is an oil medium of some sort in there with the pigment. And what you're doing is you're literally increasing the oil. I prefer to use this Galkid brand because it goes well with the Gamsol that is odorless, but liquid or walnut oil or linseed oils also work wonderfully. You just need to decide if you would like your oil paint to be drying faster or slower than normal because a lot of them offer, offer that. So you can either have a slow drying one if you'd like to work into your oil paint for multiple days, or you can have a fast drying one if you'd like a lot of it, at least the thin layers to be pretty dry the next day so that you can go back in and start doing layers. I usually tend to do more of a fast drying one because I'll do a full layer usually in a day or at least a full layer of the section that I'm working on and then I'll be ready for it to be dry in a day or two. Want to learn even more about oil painting? Awesome, you are in luck because this video is actually just one part of my complete guide to oil painting series, which includes videos not only about the best paints, brushes, and supplies to stock in your own art studio, but detailed instruction on how to actually use all your supplies as well as sharing my own personal painting techniques. You can actually watch this entire series completely for free, either on my Skillshare or here in this playlist right here because I have got a wealth of oil painting knowledge to share with you. So if you did learn something today, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed, hit the notification bell, and come back every single week for all the best fine art tutorials and art biz advice.